Okay, so I built this. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is the farm. I, while building it, I mean, this looks sick. I kind of feel like I have to build it very similar to this. Um, but while building it, I discovered maybe I'll use tinted glass will look better. It, it, we'll probably find out. So while I was building this, I realized a couple things. First, we're not going to bother with this. To sort out the uh, this stuff and this stuff, I have to have like eight chests for that. So we're just going to burn that. Not worth collecting. So we're, we're going to need two chests for each fungus type. Um, one, I'll get one for that, one for that, and one for that. And just call it. Everything else can get burnt. Um, but this works. If I go ahead and flick this switch, um, I'll, we'll see that the the floor shifts and the bone meal bone meals and then we do front once and then on the next trigger the back ones will wash the items and it'll it'll loop like that um i i'm really pleased with the way this came out i love when redstone allows me to have free space like i love it when everyone's always compact builds but i love to be able to go around through a big build like this and interact through it so I did stuff like lower these blocks down just for the sole purpose of navigating down here and seeing it. It's a really, really cool system. I'm going to go and flick that off really quickly. So um, we use, you've got trapdoors that are waterlogged that are always held on by those torches except for when we specifically turn them off. Um, we'll get to that though. So we flick this switch and the first thing that happens is this observer and this observer will get triggered by... What the hell is getting triggered in there? Oh, there's a piston in there. The piston in there pushes this block forward and begins this looping signal. Um, every time the signal goes this way, these floors get triggered. And every time the signal goes this way, these floors get triggered. Um, this piston is actually bud powdered by powered, not powdered, it is bud powered by that lever. So um, the piston in here is the block updater that updates this piston to extend that and give us a stable signal. Um, I was very pleased when I figured this out because I wanted to have a way to get this. This line needed to come from this lever and I wanted it to come in a way that I didn't have to make it clunky. And then so it goes up to this uh, ladder here. Um, the firing mechanism is literally just every time we, we pulse this, which is constantly, um, the bone meal happens. Um, and it's one on either side, so we use... They're always synced up, too. We've got the outside ones are synced up together, and the inside ones are synced up together. It's really, it, it's, it's really great system. I, I'm very, very, very proud of it. Um, I also discovered I already built it uh, I'm, uh, sort of over there, uh, which was nice because there was a lot less research I had to do. I, I, I did that probably uh, two or three months ago, at least, and forgot about it. Um, so every so often, this is a, uh, a, a hopper clock. Um, and every so often, one side will fire, which does the back, or the other side will fire, which does the front. And then that will, for the duration of the um, pulse extender, uh, let the water flush out. The items will come up first to this chain, which is a nice nondescript barrier, and then come down to this pool, into that chain, and down into a water streams that come up over here. The items will then flow up against the honey block, go over the hoppers underneath the honey, as well as the ice. And whatever we don't collect will end up here where there should be lava, but I, I didn't do that. Um, the trickiest part of the building this was getting this timing on this repeater to play nice with the timing out of this circuit. That was the only tricky thing. So it's the, the repeaters on the outside. Everything else is just running straight lines pretty much, and then a hopper clock. And also pulse extenders, and also sorting systems. It's not that straightforward. It just, it, it's stuff I'm really familiar with. I shouldn't say it was easy. I'm sure it's not easy. I just realized I haven't recorded a clip in like a million years. Um, <laughs> so I designed in a single player world this. Um, it's going to be a shifting floor for the funguses, right? Um, and I'm copying it out of my single player t like testing world now. Um, I'm really like I I, I kind of just on accident used this block palette, and I really like the way and how how very industrial copper makes things feel. So this is all waxed copper; it'll never um, oxidize. And uh, yeah, right now we've got the floors in place. 
that just do this. Oh, those torches all popped. Um, they just slide back and forth. Uh, what I'm working on next is getting the um, the water in. The water that like sends, flows the items up against these walls. Um, I realized this is the, I'm not done on that side. You can use chains as a really low profile, like visual profile block for water to stop water from flowing. Um, as long as the water is low enough, the items will flow under it, which from here to there, it totally will be. Um, there's going to be catch bins. They're not built yet, though. It's it's a pretty big room. We're over at the um, the cave hole uh, for this one. Um, yeah, I, I just figured I should probably record an update. So, you know, <laughs> I don't be just like, Here, here's a finished project again. I guess this is testing time. Yeah. Um, uh, it's, yeah, it's going to be all in place. The only thing is we don't have the filters in just yet. That's, we don't have the items to, to filter though. So let's just run it for a bit. So what we'll see is obviously this firing system, the water won't come quite that often. It's coming a little bit early. Oh, I forgot to close those off. Let's get some glass and kind of seal the way in there since we of course don't need to do that. I'm really scared that that would have hurt something. I don't think it did, though. We should be getting some pretty redonkulous um, amounts of items in here already. Cool. Let's go ahead and grab whatever we can out of this. Hey, and I was hoping to get some of that, too. Very cool. All right, that's enough to put in the filters. What would I like to use to filter? That's an excellent question. I want to use something that I know is never going to make its way into this system. Target blocks feel like an expensive filtering item, but, or I guess this is filler, not filter. But, oh! Oh. Okay, we may end up putting in some uh, uh, composters on the end of this, because holy cow. That's a lot of items. I'm not sure exactly how necessary a couple of these chests are going to be. Like, I don't think I need four filters for the funguses. Do we have it set up so it turns on the water right at the very end? I don't think it does. The the, the flower farm? Um, okay, so let's go fungus, 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 root, 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 and then I really feel like I, I there's no way I'll need that. And then... These last ones, I guess... Oh, that's got the glass in it now. Um, I guess I don't want to collect things here. Because there's absolutely no purpose. There's no way I need that much. So I can put down a bunch of composters at the very end here. Yeah, let's go grab some composters and, and do that. Oh good, he got an item. Oh man, the amount of items does catch up. Or back up or whatever. I know most stuff is going to get composted, yeah. But it's going to be like the roots and stuff. The the actual mushrooms and stuff, we're going to we're going to keep no problem. I think. 
I don't see anything that isn't the roots making it into the composters, so that's really good. Yeah, no, I know. I'm not sure 10 is going to be enough. As long as we don't get any like any of the mushrooms making it through there, I'm happy. An even bigger win if it never actually overloads. Oh my god. <laughs> We're not gonna have to worry about the fucking roots. This is a pretty, pretty quick and like we're getting these mushrooms. This is already more than we'll use. This is sick. <clears throat> I guess I'll record this clip, because darn. <clears throat> okay, so we've kind of... It's not very 100% completed, but it's as completed as it's going to get right now. Um, we do have an inhabitant. He lives here. He's perfectly safe there, don't worry. So what we've got going on is if we go up to here, this is how we can load bone meal into each of these systems. Um, there's already, like, three double chests each of bone meal for each of these you know little modules so there's a fair bit of bone meal in here already um what else do we got going on these buttons are to force flush out the items um because at the end when you turn it off it doesn't go there's 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 a 100 a way that i can make it so that when this goes back it pulses up but that's i'm not too invested in that um so we're we're getting really like this has not been running long at all and really really positive res results for these funguses obviously these are coming in in insane quantities um and then our composters are just going recycling a pretty sizable chunk honestly of the input um which is awesome that's reducing our loss I could make it so that this automatically ties up to these dispensers or, or those, you know, loading stations. And I likely will at some point, I, if I'm being honest, I pro I'm likely not going to because this is one of those farms where you run it. This is more than I'll use for quite a while. So unless I make a really cool farm that I've honestly still been tinkering with, but it's not going well um, to try and farm shroom light. But uh, yeah, this is this is it. The farm itself is done. There's some stuff I can do about making the area more finished, but the farm is done and functioning, and I'm really pleased with the results. So if you flick this off, you'll see that these items are going to get flushed off because I, you know, did it at that point, but these ones are stuck, so you can go ahead and, and boop those and get those items in two. And absolutely just, oh, a couple do sneak by when you do it that way. That's fine. Nothing, nothing too serious. There we go. All right, the project we've moved on to after finishing that uh, crimson farm is is it's honestly not at all related to what we made that crimson farm or not crimson. It's the the fungus, the the mushroom. I don't know the nether thing farm. Um, <laughs> it's not related to it. Uh, but we're gonna finally start getting to work on the plan is to have a way into here from right up there, uh, and then you can run from here to there, and then down from there to there, and then over to there. And so you've kind of got this, like, just quick, very quick route um, within these, like, this huge area where you don't have to fly or anything. But you can if you want. Um, 
to harvest these. It, it's it's I want it to be manual because the output per harvest is huge, and this is meant to be an AFK area. So you know you come in every couple hours of AFK. It takes about three hours in this area for them to fully grow, um, and just harvest it, get like almost a full double chest worth of amethyst, and then not worry about it again. Um, we're gonna have scaffolding, I think, and different layers to help harvesting this. But we've got to make this kind of fit the aesthetic of what we're doing over here. Um, maybe do an even better job. So what I'm thinking is we're going to have these light, because I want it to be light on the inside of these, like very light on the inside of them. Um, and then uh, tile, tile. So I'm going to really quickly go around and put that around it. And then I'm gonna have deep slate or um, the uh, tinted glass. Not for the entirety of these. I'm gonna have like stripes of uh, the block, the tile going kind of like through the middle of it. Uh, but that way, when you look at it from the outside, the outside is dark, but the inside is lit. Is what we're going for on on that. Um, I don't know. I was worried I didn't bring enough. Oh, I didn't. There's a whole other. <laughs> I thought I. Thought I had more done. So I'll update you once I've kind of got this module finished and then the road connecting these two started, I think is what I'll update you on next. Okay, um, this isn't as much progress as I thought I was gonna have uh, for the update, but also it, it's more, I thought I was only gonna do like out to there and be like, that's it. Um, obviously I've got a little bit of work to do with the underneath of this to kind of make it make sense, this scheme, but this is what we're going with. Um, it's hard to tell that it's going to look as good as it will in this state because there's still a fair bit of light. Um, also, I'm realizing there's not a lot in here that you can see is lit up, um, at least when you're on the same level. So we'll see about that. Oh, you know what? We can go up. Let's go up uh, to here. There should be a couple of angles we can take to look down at it. Okay, sort of. Technically, that's an angle. This is going to be too above it, so you can't see anything. Okay, so kind of kind of a little bit of an oversell, but we can get this. Oh, no, this is going to be good. This is going to be good. Yeah, so you can see it's lit out there, but it's it itself is dark. That's exactly the feel I was hoping for. So I'm going to bring this up to there, build a thing around that, um, and then I have to figure out what we're going to do to get down to there. And I also have to figure out how we're actually going to get into this as the starting one. I'm thinking I might have a way up and down through here. Uh, that you access from up there. We'll we'll see. 